Number 16 is Jack Carroll. Costa, I feel like I've got the photo here on the top left of screen. It was uh, the photo of the preseason so far. Um, I don't think there's any expectation on Jack or not not too much, but um, I don't know. There's there's something about him. I, I feel like, like he's very young. He's only just turned 19. He was a, a bottom age draftee, and I think that's probably why he slid to where he did. But he had some flashes in the reserves in 2021 where you sort of sat there thinking, wow, we, this is – like no one's talking about him. And I don't want to put pressure on him or anything like that because he's still so early in his development. But in a year where we know COVID's here, we know that there'll be two, three, four weeks where players just can't play. I have a feeling he'll surprise us this year with a couple of games. Are you on the same wavelength as me? 100%. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen them, you've got to go watch his highlights against Port Melbourne in the VFL last year. That's the yeah. game you want to have a look. That was incredible. I mean, some of the stuff he was doing was just, he breaks a tackle, a bloke running straight at him, and he just pushes right through him and then kicks it right on the on the lead to Oscar McDonald. It was, it was crazy. I, I really, really enjoyed watching that game. Um, I, I, I watched the highlights again for this video, and I... Uh, if you haven't seen that already, as a Carlton fan, you have to go watch that. It's so impressive. He was a really, really good um, connector between defence and, and and forward, which was something that we, we need, in my opinion. I mean, he's taken marks in the midfield and then providing really good inside 50 kicks into that, that forward line. And I'm not sure whether that'll be his role if he ever does come into the team this season, but some impressive stuff as a young kid, I'll tell you. Yeah, I, I think for this season, you know, for 2022, I, I mean, I don't want to put a limit on it on him or, or anyone. I think, I think the beauty of the situation that we're in is it is a fresh start for everyone. And who knows, the coaching staff might see him and he might have improved so much that they're willing to to put him in the mix and and, and play early in the season. But I think for the most part, like my prediction would be he plays more in the reserves than what he does in the AFL. And I think just getting you know, six, seven, eight straight weeks of consistent, solid footy. That's the key. Um, I don't yet know exactly what role he will play, to be honest with you. Like, I know he's a midfielder. I know that they tried him in a few different situations last season, and that's going to be part of his development. We know what we do with development. He might he might play behind the ball. He might play ahead of the ball. He might even play, you know, at times on the wing. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure of what I want from him to play it's just more of a you guys know what you're doing let him come at his own pace but i don't know i just get a funny vibe about something that let's just i think there's a surprise coming from him this year yeah 100 percent. and this isn't 2018 carlton anymore where the young boys are just chucked in the team and told to yes. go i mean we've got so many youngsters that are fighting for positions which elevates uh, elevates expectations of players i mean you you can't just just go by and, and play sort of okay and keep getting games um, even though that is somewhat important for development it's it's not sustainable at a footy club so i'm glad that we're at the point now where we've got 10 youngsters knocking down the door waiting for their opportunity at the at, at afl level i mean if you're a young player in that in that footy in the AFL squad, you, you've got to be showing something, otherwise you're not going to last very long. So that's something that's really cool for someone like having Jack in the in the in the reserves is that if he starts playing really good footy, he will get an opportunity. There's there's no doubt about it. So yeah, like you said, I, I think he will play more VFL than AFL, but there is something exciting exciting about him. For a 19 year old, he's, he's quite quite bulky, he's quite big. Like the photo that broke the internet on the car. Oh, like, you you uh... see that you get a bit you, you start drinking the Kool-Aid a bit. I mean it's it's exciting. Yeah, it's a great photo, and I'm sure he got around it as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're just little things along the way that happen. In, I mean, there's so many, there's so many characters in this journey on the list, and you just, I think the beauty of our list right now, if you look at how much it's changed in, if you, even if you just look at five, six years ago, there aren't really too many of the like. I mean, the guys who you would say are at that that bottom end or the bottom. 10 to 15, whatever the case may be. Back in the day, these guys who were in that bottom group, they were a little older. They were, you know, mid-20s. And it was kind of like, what are we doing? Like, where, where are they at? Like, what are we holding on to? Whereas you look at, like, Jack, I don't know if, if we did like a 1 to 44, 1 to 43 of the list, he probably would find himself in that 35 to 43 bracket. But that's what you want. Like, he's 19 years old. He's got, he's got, everything ahead of him. And then when you look at and you think about it a bit further and you're like, all right, well, he's got Cripps there. He's got Chera. He's got all these. Walsh, he's got a really good 
balance of young and like there's no one that's too old and they I feel like he can relate a lot to the group and you know Sam Walsh is only a couple of years older than him and I think they will relate a lot better than what our draftees had five six years ago that were coming into the system so I think the environment is great I know that he was living with fish for a while um we know how good fish is with the youngsters and um that's probably good for his development and we'll talk about fish you know later on in the series but um, I'm excited. I, I remember I, I briefly met Jack at the season launch event 2021. He was just, he, he struck me as just a, like he was just eyes wide open. Like he's in the league. Um, it's all fresh to him. Little nervous, little shy. I would hope maybe this year he just gets a bit more comfortable being a Carlton person, the environment. And then he starts feeling that ownership because I think once that happens, then he doesn't have to think about how new this world is. Once he gets used to it, then he can start, letting that just be in his subconscious and then the development will come. And I think this one's just more of an excitement for the fans just to see how he goes. Cause youngsters that come through, we all, we all latch onto them pretty quickly and we hope for the best. 100%. We're a very supportive fan base. We only want to see our youngsters do well and, and hopefully we can have a, have a few more glimpses of Jack in, in 2022 and, and see what he has to offer us. And yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? Do you have any, expectations or any notes or any other thoughts about him? Did you watch him play much in 2021? Um, let me know. Let, let us know. Like where, where, what is the plan for Jack? Like where does he eventually find his spot in this side? What is it going to look like? Let us know in the comments.